This is the ITV News with James Mitz. The remaining babies have been removed from the neonatal room in the hospital. A major cleaning operation has begun. Ellie Price reports. The news came late last night. Johnny Peacock, aside for a moment, another Johnny. Johnny Coggan from Essex launches his Paralympic campaign in the much-anticipated wheelchair rugby. Now, they call it murderable. It's not hard to see why. Ellie Price reporting there. She joins us uh, from Lewis now. And Ellie, what was the reaction in court as the verdict was announced? Well, throughout this case, the court has heard from witnesses who describe Leslie Dunford as childlike, often laughing inappropriately. Today, she just stared ahead. There was no emotion on her face as she was led down to start her seven-year sentence. This is a case that's gone on for more than six weeks. The jury took two days to unanimously convict Leslie Dunford of manslaughter. She was acquitted of murder. The jury unable to decide that she had intended to kill Lucy. But as Judge Brown said, as he sentenced her, she had shown little or no remorse since her daughter's death. Ellie, uh, how has this scheme been received by companies in the area? Well, the business people I spoke to at the meeting in Margate this morning certainly seemed optimistic. And they are here at Bay Point too, which is significant because the company's business plan is based around redeveloping this site, which used to be Pfizer's social club. They see it as something of a phoenix from the flames. But full recovery is an uphill struggle. Uh, you'll remember that Thanet's unemployment rate sits at 6.3%, which is one of the highest in the southeast. So some glimmers of hope this morning, but still a long way to go. The residents at Dale Farm have until Wednesday to leave voluntarily. After that, they could be forcibly evicted at any time. And while knocking on the Prime Minister's door is unlikely to stop or even stall that, they say they will fight on and defy the order to leave. Any price, Anglia News, Westminster. The first quarter of this Parliament is almost over. Education hasn't been met with the same level of opposition. Cambridgeshire MP Andrew Lansley had with his health reforms. But with more changes coming into play, who knows if that could change? Well, our reporter Ellie Price is in Brighton for us this lunchtime. Ellie, the councils say this is a long-term plan to promote green energy, but others say it's simply a waste of money. Yes, that's right. And this is what they're talking about. This is one of the charging points. Now, the idea is that electric car drivers can pull up to a bay like this one, park for free for three hours and charge their cars for free for three hours. Now, there are eight of these charging points across Brighton and Hove. The City Council say they cost £7,500 each to install, which is quite a lot of money when you think there are only 33 electric cars registered to the Brighton and Hove area. You'll notice that no one is parked in this bay at the moment. And that say the consumer groups is part of the problem, that they're simply not getting value for money from these charging points. Our reporter Ellie Price joins us live from Hastings now. And Ellie, do we know what these messages mean or where the next one's likely to spring up? Well, most of the pieces have thought-provoking messages on them. The one on the library says, read, read. Another one says, I'm mad as hell. And then there's this one, which, if you'll pardon my French, means, I love you, monkey face. As for when the next one will appear, well, that's the big question. But I can assure you there are a number of locals frantically looking. That's it from the weekend team. We're back tomorrow at half past five. Goodbye. <laughs>